children across the country are expected to skip classes on Friday as part of a strike against climate change. I do not accept that taking time off school is useful for children. Spijbelen, ik, uh, dat staat echt niet in mijn woordenboek. Ik vind dat geen goed idee. Ik heb dat nooit een goed idee gevonden. Kids should go to school. Kirjafta is an inspiration to us all. She was the catalyst of this movement. I just sat down outside the Swedish parliament. I would never have imagined that it was going to be this big. She was my inspiration to start this. Together we've started a revolution. We will be in 100 country at least. Basically towns and cities everywhere. It's going to be gigantic. We're marching towards Buckingham Palace! <laughs> In the arts, we will keep on striking until they do something. We are facing the biggest crisis humanity has ever faced. If your house is on fire, you don't sit down and talk. I want people to panic. We have come here to let you know that change is coming, whether you like it or not. My name is Greta Thunberg. I am from Sweden and I am a climate activist. We are outside the Swedish parliament. I sit here every Friday. I am not a scientist. I don't have the proper education. I am only a messenger. If we continue at the rate we are now, by the year 2030, we will set off an irreversible chain reaction, which will trigger events beyond human control. Then there is no going back. My demand is that the politicians should follow the Paris Agreement. If you have read the Paris Agreement, you know that it's very radical. If I should have any other demands, maybe it would be to declare an international climate emergency. We demand that our government provide a plan to protect our future and reach a 1.5 Paris target. We also demand a coal phase out in Germany until 2030. Our first demand is for the government to declare a climate emergency and take active steps towards climate justice. Our second demand is to accurately portray the crisis to the general public and for the government to recognise that as the youth we have the greatest stake in our future by incorporating our views into policy making and bringing the voting age down to 16. We have like three demands. One, it is that we have a big international role, Belgium. Second of all, that politicians really need to start talking to the experts and climate becomes a priority in politics. Before Greta started this, Nobody talked about it ever. It was not a topic at all, when it's actually one of the biggest threats that we will ever face. I first started learning about climate change when I was maybe eight in school, when my teachers showed us pictures of plastic in the ocean and starving polar bears and extreme weather events. Those pictures were stuck in my head. I couldn't stop thinking about them. When I was maybe 11, I became depressed. I stopped eating and I stopped talking and I stopped going to school. I got out of that depression by thinking to myself, there's so much I can do. I just woke up as usual, had breakfast and then took some flyers and sign and just sat down outside the Swedish parliament inspired by the Parkland students in the United States. And then some media started writing about it and already the second day when I sat down, people started joining me. And since then I am almost never alone when I am here. After a few weeks, it started spreading to other Swedish cities and then to other countries. I would never have imagined that it was going to be this big. Since I have Asperger's, I am very 
direct. I don't say nice words and just to be polite, I say just how, I, how it is. And I think that is, we lack that very much today. You say you love your children above all else. And yet you are stealing their future in front of their very eyes. You are not mature enough to tell it like it is. Even that burden you leave to us children. What do you mean? Du, 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 du. When I started these strikes in Berlin, every week it was so much pressure for me just to like get people there. And in the beginning, it was just like people I knew that I was like asking a favor. And you can't do like a campaign on favors. <laughs> That's weird. So I asked, like, Louis was like the first person I asked to like join in the beginning. I wasn't by myself because there were other people with the same idea in different cities, like Jakob. And right now we have little local groups of Fridays for Future in more than 350 cities across the country. I mean, we are now all over the place. We have these meetings and usually they're like super packed. After a few weeks of striking, we realized that people don't feel committed to it when they don't have like a personal connection to the strikes. So at the beginning we had only phone calls, but like it turned out very quickly that you need people to come together and like actually get to know each other. So we introduced like meetings every week. Äh, ich weiß nicht, ob ihr es mitbekommen habt. Hi, ich bin Luisa übrigens. Mm. Ähm, <lacht> <lacht> und you meet in person and bond. And then you build trust. And they all became friends. Yes, and now they're like a super they tight friend groups. And they're like, they meet every day. Ähm, deswegen sagt das allen Leuten weiter und seid Freitag rechtzeitig da. Me and Evie did this event last night. Basically, it was called Letters Live. It's like a gig where they read letters out instead of songs. It was kind of led by Benedict Cumberbatch. So we read the Global Strike letter out. He was really impressed with us, like really supportive. Tom Odell was there. Tom York from Radiohead. So, yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch held my hand. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey. How you doing? Good. Good. We had an open contest where anyone could submit a logo they wanted, and um, we've just voted for this one. The two circles are like global unity, and yeah. it also is like a book. You know, there's the symbol of raising your hand as like a activism thing, but that's like raising your hand in class. In class. So it was kind of a, a play on that. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's the best one up. Yeah. Oh, that's a Nuna. Okay, I'll go after. Hi, Nuna. There we go. Amazing. Um, I guess I'll just explain how we do it here. So we have a group of people, and there's maybe about eight of us, and then we have like a wider group because we get so many messages from towns everywhere in the UK saying like, can we set one up? Where are you going to do it in uh, the 15th? So on the 15th, we're between 50 and 100 at the moment. And it's like changing every day. So basically towns and cities everywhere. Like the major one is going to be in London. We need like one big group uh, of all the countries that are striking on the 15th mm -hmm. so that yeah. they can all send through their numbers yeah. of how many they were so that yeah. we can count it up because it will be really amazing if you do something like that. Yeah, that is definitely will make that happen. On March 15, we have a global strike and we want to make them feel that if the whole world can unite about climate change, the politicians cannot ignore it anymore. This is an issue that transcends borders, it transcends nationalities. March 15th is really a message of unity. The thing I really wanted to ask you about was how you went about setting up meetings with politicians. The thing is, they're just really going to give you some bullshit. It's really important that you always stay very neutral politically. Yeah. yeah. Second of all, it's also really important that when you speak to politicians, you are you need to be badass. 
and they're gonna be like, what do you suggest? What do you think we need to do? And they're gonna be like, I don't know, because I'm in high school, fucker. I'm feeling a bit sick. I woke up very nauseous, but I really want to do the strike today, so we're just gonna go for it and it'll be fine. Yeah. Badass. <laughs> this is Kira, my best friend, and we started Youth for Climate together. We're doing this like as partners in crime. <laughs> today we're in uh, Louvel à Neuf, and I already see a lot of people. My name is Luca and I'm the twin sister of Anuna. For three months now, it has been a lot of interviews. It's like a full-time job, definitely for her. But for me, it's crazy that people are yelling her name, that people are like, oh, can I have to take a picture with Anuna? I'm like, oh, that's my sister. But mostly, I just, I feel so proud. <laughs> The plenary meeting in the week is on Thursday in Belgium. I always protest on, on a Thursday, but I think it's important to do it on a, on a weekday because I feel like if you wouldn't rebel and we wouldn't do anything wrong according to the system, nobody would listen to us. And that, that has been proven because we've striked on Sundays and it's been ignored. <laughs> on the 15th, I hope it will be all over the world and that in every country there will be strikes I'm really stressing out because I really want it to be big. So this is the Ministry of Economy and that's the Ministry of Mobility. And right in between, we strike because we need a change in economy and a change in mobility. And it's very convenient because you've got this kind of natural stage here. So every Friday, we ask people to come here and strike with us for like three months now. We are not here! We are not loud! So a few weeks ago, there was this journalist and he was like, this is not nice. And he started this online campaign against me with a hashtag. My friends from Berlin with the strikes, they said like a counter hashtag and for weeks said like a very big letter to like, we love Luisa. We are at a federal press conference. So we're here with Scientists for Future, which is 700 plus leading climate scientists across Germany who came together and kind of said, listen to those young kids because they're right and we got the science behind this. And zwar eine Position, die die Forderung der Protestierenden Schülerinnen und Studenten nach schnellem und dezidiertem Handeln in Sachen Klima- und Umweltschutz voll unterstützt. Dann kann ich direkt jetzt am Anfang begrüßen und unsere Gäste, die direkt von der Bundespressekonferenz hier zu uns kommen, von Fridays for Future. Und äh, gerade auch wir als Linke freuen uns natürlich, weil, dass es dieses Engagement jetzt Frau Merkel, die angebliche Klimakanzlerin, die jetzt eigentlich eher den Titel Klimazerstörungskanzlerin verdient, Und nichts macht eine Regierung mehr Angst als ihre Wählerinnen und Wähler, die auf der Straße stehen oder die Arbeitnehmerinnen und Arbeitnehmer, die auf der Straße stehen. Wir brauchen jeden von euch, jede und jeden und verlassen uns darauf, dass ihr mitmacht. I actually had no idea that this was going to be so big. I expected like a few people in like a conference room, but it was huge. And we were like supposed to do like a speech thing and I thought it was a Q&A, so I had nothing prepared. So we could have been much harsher and say really like you're messing up the coal exit because coal energy plays a huge role and they're not like critical enough. Everyone wants to be associated with what we do. People see that we get a lot of attention. There is little you can say against young people who demand a future. So I think when people come to us and say, it's great what we do, can we support you? Can we like take a picture together? They want to get some cool points. <laughs> 
Du denkst jetzt einmal kurz fotografieren, das ist so schön. Ja, out there in a nutshell. Sometimes it's hard to deal with all this media attention. They constantly take pictures and film and ask questions. Before I started the school strike, I was very shy. It's a huge contrast, but I haven't changed. I don't know if people my generations are willing to change their habits and lifestyle in order to reduce their own carbon footprint. Because we want to do what everyone else wants to do. We want to become famous and we want to have a private jet. We want to have a sports car just like everyone else and we can't continue thinking like this. crisis but we will be a pain in the ass we will keep on striking until they do something we don't do this because it's easy we do this because it's hard and we are doing this and we refuse to be silent about our future In Brussels, that was the first time I met Anuna, uh, some of the organizers of the school strike. Meeting Greta is amazing because she's, she was my inspiration to start this. And now, together with all the other countries and Luisa and Kira, we've started a revolution. Today we are going to Paris because we think it's really important that everybody joins the movement and it's only the second strike in Paris. So it's not that big yet, so we want to be like an inspiration. Are you guys the organizers here? Yeah? We organize the strikes in Belgium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I get... Hey, hey, this is Anna Taylor. Yeah, the UK organizers. We're, from the UK. We're both yeah. from the UK. England. Do you have strikes in the UK? Yeah, so we had a huge one. How many people were there? 15,000 across the UK. 5,000 in London. Yeah, yeah, last week. We're hoping 15, for a lot. 15,000, yeah. 15, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's our first time. First time, yeah. that's yeah. great. In Paris, President Macron invited us over. That was a very sobering meeting. He hasn't quite understood why we're going on the streets. He was really kind and he was uh, listening, but I hope he understands that we need brave leaders that are going to take the brave decisions. What we need to do is not to wait 10 years and then act, but to act now because in 10 years it's too late. Politicians need to be held accountable for their words. And I think that this movement can keep pushing them to actually do what they say that they will do. What? Where is that? Non zijn we zo van die attentiehoeren. Attention hoes. Sorry. Nee, ja, ik denk dat iemand al wat heeft gezegd. We zullen ja. als jullie dat zien zitten eh, om de Instagram van Valerie Zaasten over te nemen. Dus gewoon wel achter de schermen foto's te trekken te filmen van. Eh, maar pas vanaf half zes. Ja. Dat is dat ook. En wij moeten dat doen? Ah, wel, als je ja. wilt, ja. Ik zal mijn gezin doen. Foto's van jezelf trekken van, van, van ja, als de nacht iets drinkt of zo. Een <lacht> <lacht> tegenover, hè? Ja. Dus, uh... Komt in orde. Dat is wel fijn. Komt goed. 
Wel, ik ga het wachten. Dan ik ja. Ik ja. bij ons zetten, dan ga ik je al markeren. Dat is oké. Okay. Het is zouden, nodig vandaag. Uh, we zouden geen meer tijd hebben voor het eten. Allee, ik ja, ook. gewoon subtiel en zo. Ja, mag je hoofd Ik heb wel echt... Voilà. My life has gotten way more interesting than it was before. Being a public figure suddenly, because like I'm 17, it's, it's really weird and it's different. But I feel like I have more freedom and I get to meet people that have a story and not just like 17 years old that want to drink and party and stuff. So I really like it. I look like um, the Griet from the Hunger Games. Echt op te passen met dat kerndebat, want dat is een van de zwaarste debatten dat er op dit moment ja, is in ja, de politiek. Ja, ja. En Zo, je gaat enorm gaan polariseren door daar te diep op in te gaan. Before the show we discuss about how we're going to say some things and what we're going to address. Because uh, it's a performance, so you have to know what to say and how to act. Hallo, wij zijn Kira en Anuna van Youth for Climate. En wij zijn vandaag de gasten van Giel zijn gasten om onze eisen voor te leggen aan de politie samen met ta- Sami en zijn hond. Hi. Het is gepost. Het is gepost. I don't need a boyfriend, I want a dog. En ook dat moet je aan het zwemmen in de maand. Dat zwem ik wel. Voilà, Anna en Kira. Zie je zo, alsjeblieft. Dank je. Heel veel mensen van met België alleen gaan erin uh-huh. komen. Maar ik vind dat een beetje met de vinger wijzen, want België zelf doet het Europees gewoon ook heel slecht. I feel amazing when she's up there talking to all these big guys. They have a lot of experience, they have communication lessons and stuff. And she's just 17, she's just googling stuff to, to know what she's talking about. I wouldn't be as strong as she is. En door te wachten op dan China of Amerika of India, omdat dus, dat grote vervelend Mag ik eens een tegenvraag stellen? Is er iemand hier rond de tafel die denkt dat China op ons zit te wachten om te zeggen, nu gaan we het ook doen? Als België die maatregelen ah, neemt, dan gaan we toch... Ja, maar nee, dat is het argument dat hier Het is hier goed dat u die wordt. vraag stelt, maar dat is ja. niet het punt dat, dat, dat Anuna maakte. Het punt dat Anuna maakte, dat is begin bij jezelf. Peter Drover van NVA, he, it's a right party. And he says, like, the tech is not there yet and we need to wait for the scientists. Even if we reduce CO2 in our country, it wouldn't change a lot on world scale. Ja, voor elke expert die jij vindt, vind ik een andere. I remember in the 80s that uh, Greenpeace had t-shirts, no time to lose. So the idea that we are on the end of the game is something that uh, uh, is typical for every generation. And uh, I don't think we have to have that uh, fan de siècle or even fan de monde feeling. Uh, that is very destructive. The problem is that politicians don't get that we need to take drastic measures. There are plans and the scientists, they have ideas. Het was kind of bullshit. There is a very international conference and debate on climate change. This event is very important because there are like 60 delegates of 20 countries and You really feel like united. The 15th, the global strike is coming up. So this is a great way to just like talk to the other countries about how we're gonna do it and all the practical stuff like that. So we had a Fridays for Future Europe meeting and we also met with different members of the EU parliament as well to discuss what they could do and really to try and get them to listen and say, this is urgent, you aren't doing enough. So we're just going to listen. Um, and I hope more people will show up because it's quite empty. Thank you for this debate. It's about time. But I think a lot of people who are here now are getting a bit of tired that people are saying, thank you for telling us. They don't want thanks. They want action. We have to put the things straight on the table. To say that there has been no action in these five years. These five years has happened more in climate action than ever. The 
MEPs that were shouting, go back to school, clearly hadn't listened. It's just an example of how young people are being let down by those in power. I wanted to know uh, your reaction after the debate this morning. How did you feel? Did you feel deceived? Basically, I feel like a lot of the politicians in that meeting were saying what they wanted us to hear, not what they were actually going to do. In two days, on March 15th, students are going to strike in at least 68 countries on all the continents, except Antarctica. <laughs> the time for talking is over. We need them to take action to stop climate change now. Thank you. But the thing is, though, that... We're going to get our train now. Oh, well okay. done. It was nice seeing you. Yeah, I'll see you soon. See you again see you soon. Bye-bye. We were invited to sit there and listen and, I mean, it's nice that they invited us, but it's really not the way it should be. Because you're not giving us a seat at the table, we should just listen to you, smiling. And now at the press conference, not one politician was there. So they're not even interested in how we felt after it, you know? They... <sighs> it's hard. At the moment, we're just making banners for the protest, which is tomorrow. Everyone is stressed right now, so it's just about chilling out and being creative and getting ready. So it's going to get expected. <laughs> no, yeah. UKSEN have written a letter. It's effectively a challenge to the political leaders of the UK to ask them to meet with us and discuss our demands. This is effectively what we want from striking. We want them to recognise that as the youth we have the biggest stake in our future and to incorporate our youth into policy making. I am doing respect existence or expect resistance. Climate change is a big thing and it educates you, but sometimes it just doesn't educate you on the right thing. Climate change is not on the curriculum. I think we need the government to actually do something about that. And this will be one of the things that will decide what our future will be like. It's hard to estimate how many people are going to be there. We have 5,000 in London last time, so I'm really hoping we can get at least 8,000 or maybe 10,000 out tomorrow. I'm going to write, the sea levels are rising, but the youth are rising faster. A mixture of threat and hope in that sign. Today it's March the 15th and right now we have 125 countries and over 2,000 cities uh, in which people are joining the school strike on all continents, including Antarctica. Young people are saying that this is enough and that we are not going to accept this anymore. Guten Morgen aus Berlin. Ich bin Luisa Neubauer und werde heute vom Berliner Klimastreik berichten. It's half an hour to go and it's like filling up. This is cute. Großartig, dass ihr alle da seid. Es ist 10 vor 10 und es sind schon so unglaublich viele Leute da. We are here because we feel betrayed by the people in the building. There's a lot of us here, and possibly a million students striking across the world today. What? What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Die zien we dan ook te schijnen, hè. Ja. Die kamer, ah, die kamer dat is nu gericht. Ah, ja, ja, ja. En ik was in Straatsburg om, om te zien voor de internationale coördinatie hoe dat we het verder uh, gaan regelen met de rest van de landen. En het is ongelooflijk, de movement gaat alleen maar groeien. Voor veel landen is dit de eerste strike. Dus vanaf nu gaat het gewoon nog veel groter worden. We staan in voor een existentiële crisis. De grootste crisis en menselijkheid die nog steeds staat in voor. Ook en dan zo hadden ignoreerd in decennia van de mensen die we weten om het. We is de jongen, we hebben niet bedragen tot deze crisis. We hebben alleen gevoed in deze wereld. En plötzlich zo hebben we gevonden een crisis voor ons die we moeten leven met. Die we moeten leven met heel ons leven, onze kinderen, onze kinderen en alle toekomstige generaties. En we kunnen niet accepteren dat. We kunnen niet laten dat gebeuren. Dus daarom strijken we. We strijken voor dat we een toekomst willen. En we kunnen voortzetten. I think this is just the beginning of the beginning of the movement. I think we haven't seen anything yet. We are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, with up to 200 species becoming extinct every single day. Erosion, deforestation of our great forests, toxic air pollution, loss of insects and wildlife, the acidification of our oceans. These are all disastrous trends being accelerated by a way of life that we, here in our financially fortunate part of the world, see as our right to simply carry on.